Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome to the second session. After we had a very hot session, number one, with the burning issues about immigration, radicalization, and gender, we are coming to a very quiet session on science and technology. Uh, as you know, science and technology are the best facilities for human uh, to life. So anything done in science and technology is for the humanity and for the better life. Uh, the first speaker, uh, Muhammad Ahmed al uh, he is a consultant physician uh, and came out with very, very interesting ideas and published these ideas in a book which is here. And I think this book is very useful, especially for young medicals in the developing countries, and in Sudan in particular, because we have a horizontal expansion of medical education. We have so many uh, medicals who is uh, not well trained. So this book definitely will be of use uh, in the Sudan. So I will invite Ahmed Tom to take 10 minutes not more than that, to <laughs> present his paper. Yeah, I'm thanking the, the organizers for inviting me to introduce the book. What, what were the reasons why I, I decided to uh, make this book? A, a major uh, hospital, which is Omdurman Teaching Hospital. Uh, I, I, there wasn't any guidelines to advise the uh, doctors about how to to manage patients with fluid depletion or with electrolyte problems or with acute kidney injury, and it's sad enough to say that also there wasn't a, 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 there wasn't a sphygmomanometers to manage the blood pressure, and there wasn't a, a, also charts to uh, record the blood pressure and temperature and pulse rate the vital signs, which are very vital in managing pa uh, patients. Again, there wasn't fluid charts to see, especially say if somebody has a high temperature with uh, diarrhea, with vomiting. There wasn't even fluid ch charts. There wasn't facilities to do blood tests. And there was also, uh, there is a still very limited access to medications. Uh, this is on the, local or on the Sudanese front. But uh, globally, there is a problem with, with fluids. As doctors, medical students, we were not taught well about intravenous fluids. Again, there is very limited also evidence-based knowledge about <coughs> intra, in, intravenous fluids. And uh, whichever is understood or and taught is not applied well. So. That is why there is a lot of errors in uh, managing patients with dehydration, with uh, electrolyte imbalance, and with acute kid kidney injury. And in fact, this is very unfortunate. It's not only in the developing world or the southern part of the globe. It's also in the developed countries. It's not, so, it's not it's, it's a global problem. And this unfortunate teenager died because of excessive fluid administration and he's a British, he's an English. Uh, the, uh, the, why we took, I took the adventure, in fact, there, we do have history, and probably the very first pilot in the history is from that part of the world. The, the, uh, the first two is the literature review writing and peer review. By the way, before, when I, do you know who is the, this pilot? A British one. Is it? Mm. This is, this is, this is uh, the very first in, in history in the 19th century. This is Al-Abbas ibn Farnas. He's, he's an Andalusian, Andalusia. He's the very first pe person to, and he, he used that uh, device and he uh, flew for about, I think, nine minutes or so. So that, 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 that this is, we've got history again. And 
it was a very the literature review writing and uh, peer reviews are really very painstaking very long path very hard work and uh, when it comes to the peer review of the there the are about maybe 11 or 10 articles every article you need to get it peer reviewed by at least one or two or three or four as, uh, to just to give it the scientific value and unfortunately I, I'm, I'm sorry to say that it is, it's a self criticism by the way There's nobody from the southern part of the world of the globe has responded unfortunately to when I, I submitted these articles to them to peer review them and then it, it goes into uh, I mean the academic academics will know the proofreading and designing and and the printing and and the when it well I mean when it came to that um, uh, level then uh, I, I know uh, Dr. Adil Dafala is a friend of mine and then uh, Dr. Muiz or Mr. Muiz al Siddiq they introduced me to Professor Alam and I would really uh, acknowledge Professor Alam input in uh, in making this book. It, it is not uh, my own uh, effort, it is a collective effort. And uh, I, I just I dedicate the book to my parents and to also acknowledge the, my mentors, the Dr. Mason and Dr. Venkat Rahman, and many colleagues and as pharmacists there, so Professor Alam, Dr. Adel Dafalla, and Muaz Siddiq. And the, I called it the ABC because it is really an ABC, which is that all what we need, to be honest, in the developing world, mm. the following part of the world. It is an ABC of the, as its name implies, intravenous fluids and the electrolysis. And you can get, a, 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 can get it also free on, on, the, uh, on the website. And there is also some free uh, hard copies. Uh, the, uh, the chapter on IV fluids, again, I, I just have some historic perspective. Uh, Ibn al-Nafis is the very first person to describe the pulmonary circulation. And then on, followed by Mr. William, Dr. William Harf, Harvey, who, who again described uh, the whole circulation. And that has paved the way of the concept of giving people intravenous fluids. And there was an outbreak of the cholera in the 19th century in Sunderland. And there is a, a doctor called Dr. Oshia. Is, uh, uh, he went to, inv to investigate the outbreak. And <coughs> then following this, those investigations, a doctor called Dr. Lata, he produced the very first uh, uh, intravenous fluid and uh, very primitive way of administering the fluid. And in fact, he man <coughs> the, the, of about 15, nine of the 15, they survived the cholera outbreak at that time. And it's unfor unfortunately, now this is the, uh, uh, the 19th century in Sunderland, the fatalities, and they did well. But we are still in, in Africa with still the cholera outbreak. The people are dying because of dehydration, because of dehydration and malnutrition. So it is very unfortunate. And the, I mean, from that chapter, the, the, you have to be, to, to, you have to know your science, and you have to be very vigilant when you, I mean, I'm not going to read you with uh, and, uh, the uh, types of fluids that were administered and fluids and so forth. The, the, uh, the, uh, the chapter on uh, AKI, and that is, uh, that's acute kidney injury. An acute kidney injury is not a, a, a traumatic injury of the kidney. Is an acute, they used to call it acute renal failure. But the nephrology community has now agreed to call it acute kidney injury. It is a, just a, 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 a disease, acute failure of the kidneys to work. And there is an, uh, the, the ISN is an international society of nephrology. They do have an initial initiative to say that there, is, uh, there should be at zero fatality by 2025 of death from acute kidney injury in the, acute, in the developing world. And I hope this is uh, 
uh, this is a contribution towards that initiative. And when, if you can see it well, it says the acute kidney injury in the, in the, from the area where it came from, or just generally in Africa, is, it's not low. It's just because we, we it's, not, uh, it's undiagnosed, unfortunately. So it doesn't mean that it is low in Africa. It is just undiagnosed, unfortunately. The, uh, in fact, the conclusion is not uh, answers. It's, it are rather questions. It's how to overcome the barriers to medical care, how to even the disparities in medical care. Why are we in the southern part of the world not engaging in research and publications and even doing reviews? Just, just a, a self-criticism. And then the, where are the policymakers? Where are the politicians? And in fact, I put this yesterday in Google, and I came with hundreds of these cartoons about the status, unfortunately, in that part of the world. This is one of the, this is a cartoon I got from, the, from Google yesterday. It's very unfortunate, obviously. This is another cartoon I yesterday I got from Google. Again, it's very, very unfortunate. The, the, the policing or the health service is not that important, unfortunately, in that part of the world. And also, I got this yesterday from Google. Again, it is really the corruption, corruption, corruption. It's not the resources, it's not anything. I think it's just the, the political will, which is we are lacking. I'm, I'm, I'm sure my colleagues will elaborate further uh, than my, I'm a, just a clinician. So I'm not really a policy maker. I don't understand more than writing IV fluids or writing antibiotics for patients. And on the positive side, for me, writing the book or this book and the, uh, the uh, ideas from the peer reviews were very helpful for on my own education, by the way. And it was very steep learning curve. And uh, having said all this, I think hope is still there. We are, we are, we are the hope, which we should be hope, hopeful. This is obviously this initiative is part of that uh, that hope, and uh, I will really, really appreciate your uh, comments and suggestions, especially the criticism and uh, how to make it better for the second or the coming uh, edition. And before we we go to the questions and answers section. I would really want to thank everybody for listening and want to thank uh, Professor Alam for his support all through the, uh, the moral, the encouragement, and the financial support. Uh, thank you to all. Thank you, Dr. Mohammed. You have taken two minutes more. <laughs> <laughs> because, but your subject is very interesting. I will give you two minutes more. <laughs>